You know, the last couple updates were actually really good. First we have received the new navy frigates, and now the new navy frigates have been buffed. Which honestly happened a lot sooner than I have expected, but here we are. The navy frigates have received a little bit more DPS, a little bit more power grid, and most importantly, they have received a fourth low slot. Now, no frigate in the game besides the navies has more than three slots in the in the low slot, so that is kind of uh, a very important change, which means that the future frigates might have extra high slots, perhaps even extra medium slots. But today I'll be flying the Rifter Navy, and I'll be covering all of the other navies uh, video by video, since you know they have been changed and they are now a little bit different. Now the Robos does remain the same, uh, but the expert small cannon Preshmos will give you a little bit more DPS than before. Plus 35% small cannon damage, which honestly should be really good on this ship. And of course the the shield boost the mouth is the is the same. This uh, the Rifter fleet is a very very nice little boat. Now here we have three high slots, three medium slots, four low slots, three combat, and three engineering rigs. The Rifter remains a shield tank, and the stats on uh, the resistances on uh, the shield are also really good. The capacitor is 3 gigajoules, recharge time 24 seconds, recharge rate uh, 6.28 gigajoules per second, it can lock 5 targets, and the Rifter Navy remains the the fastest Navy frigate. Honestly, uh, this little ship should perform much, much better now, and the extra low slot will, will give us a little bit more opportunity when, uh, when fitting the ship. So. Let me show you the build. Now, this is a passive tank rifter. I was playing around to see what I can do with it, and I'm using the Republic Fleet small auto cannons. If you have the C types, you can use the C types. The DPS will be much better, of course, but the C types are kind of expensive, so uh, I have the Republic Fleet ones, which still do look really good. They have a very nice optimal and very good fall off in the medium slots. Once Karenler and Dual Webs. This is basically a brawler Rift the Navy, a small afterburner, medium extender, a damage control, and one adaptive shield hardener. Now, as for the nanocore, I actually did expect them to uh, change the nanocores and basically allow other green and blue nanocores to be used, but that didn't happen yet. I'm still fa uh, fairly sure that they will enable the old Enochorus to be used on the ship, so we just have to be patient, but you can get the Trailblazer core if you like, it should be really good. I would definitely go with extra damage. But yeah, uh, if you want to go with the new Enochorus you can, I would suggest that you wait for the old Enochorus to be available for this ship. The rigs remain the same, dual burst aerators and one anti-EM uh, reinforcer, dual ancillary power routers and one auxiliary thruster. 13,152 uh, hit points and 109.90 meter per second is the afterburner speed. Pretty good stats uh, for a frigate, but let me show you the active stats on this ship, which means let's Undocking. undock and let's see. Let's see how the active stats look. Okay, let me quickly rearrange the modules. There we go. I mean, it's very simple to to adjust everything. Nice and smooth. And of course, it looks clean, which is most important. I believe they have uh, changed the speed on the Rifter as well. It might be a little bit faster than it did before. 18,859 hit points, 69, 58, 69, and 74% resistance. 5,750 shield hit points, which honestly is quite a lot for a frigate. 1.7 km per second is the afterburner speed. It is still really good. The warp preparation is also very fast. Now, uh, with the barrage implant on 500 DPS, which is good. 
pretty decent DPS for a frigate. It can be always hard if you have C types. And if you have a better implant, it will definitely be uh, better than this end. With the Devil Claw 90, 86, 89, and 91% resistance. You can combine this with the Warning. shield Capacitor extender, low. and it will definitely give you a very, very nice. Uh, extra shield. If you combine that with the damage control, you do get a very nice buffer tank on this frigate. And I'm very Docking happy with how the accepted. tank on this thing looks. Now, uh, that's the that's the passive rifter tank, but this ship is more of a active tank, and I'll be doing a active tank uh, within this uh, video. Now. Speaking of uh, active tank, you can replace the extender with a shield booster and you can replace the web with a small Nosferatu. Now the ship has much more power and you can easily fit you can easily fit uh, all the necessary modules. You can even fit a C-type medium booster. The capacitor is 37 seconds but it boosts 523 shields every 4.14 seconds. And you have about 2015, 2028 shield hit points, which means your shield will be fully recharged in about 4 cycles, less than 4 cycles. So yeah, uh, kind of impressive. And you also have a damage control and adaptive shield hardener. So in your turn this is a very tanky, a very tanky frigate. Now this is without a uh, without a general unit for the booster, I can definitely improve the the boost amount. I can technically double it, so you can technically boost the shield in two cycles. So that is kind of wild, uh, but still, uh, since this has Undocking. this ship has a bonus on booster, on all boosters, a medium booster is definitely the way to go if you like a active tank, and you can also make it fairly tank with the adaptive ends with the damage control, which honestly is something we haven't really seen uh, in frigates yet. Now later in the video you will see uh, the booster boosting in action, uh, I'm just showing how much capacitor it uses. It doesn't use that much capacitor honestly, uh, the capacitor does get recharged fairly fast with the small Nosferatu. I'm kind of thinking if we could place two Docking medium request modules, accepted. one medium Nosferatu and a medium booster, that would kind of be wild. I think it's possible, but I have to uh, do integrations if I want to do that, which would be a little bit expensive. Now, uh, this is one of the builds that I kind of, uh, I kind of really like on this thing. So, uh, let me replace some modules. You can also undo a dual adaptive build and you can also add a damage control, and instead of the Nosferatu, you can uh, use a medium neutralizer. Yes, this frigate has now enough power to fit a medium neutralizer, which will be uh, really good and really effective against other frigates, destroyers, and can even be used against cruisers. Now let me undock and let me show you the active stats. Of course, Undocking. with a medium neutralizer, I would prefer to have a battery installed, and I'll uh, show you that build uh, next when I when I dock here. Adaptives are on, let's orbit the station. The afterburn speed will remain the same. 12,206 hit points, 79, 79 and 82%, which is pretty good. And with the damage control, your DPS your, uh, your tank is 36,111, 93, 90, 93 and 94% resistances, which for a frigate is impressively tanky, I like it. So uh, let me dock and let me change the build Docking request accepted. again, since I have a lot of different ideas that I would like to show you. So uh, let's open up the fitting window. I said with a neutralizer, with a medium neutralizer, you can easily uh, use a capacitor battery. Now, I, ideally, I, I would like to slap a medium capacitor battery, but for that, I would have to really change the build. But for now, you can uh, easily replace a adaptive into a small capacitor battery, 
And honestly, if you decide to use the neutralizer, turn on the capacitor battery and then turn on the neutralizer. That way the capacitor battery will be used instead of the main capacitor. And this is one of the builds that uh, also looks quite interesting. Now, you can use uh, this the, the same build uh, with the with the cannons, with the strike cannons, or as I like to call them, artillery cannons. And you do have enough power to actually pull a build like this easily. And in, instead of the um, afterburner, you can use a uh, micro warp drive, and you have a very nice kite drifter. Of course, uh, you can replace that one web with a tracking disruptor, with a garden disruptor, or even with a dampener. That's just one of the ideas that uh, you can use. If you have a tracking disruptor, then your target is basically going to be unable to hit you. A build that will be good against short-range frigates, short-range ships with missiles. You can even use a scrambler for defense. 108 out of 108. It, it is perfect. The power grid usage is perfect up until the very last. Up until the very last power grid. Now, uh, let me quickly uh, remove those two modules. You can easily pull off a build like this uh, if you like without the neutralizer. One web and one tracking adapter can be also helpful, or you can use a scrambler uh, instead of the web if your target is a short range frigate. A dampener can also be used, you can also use something like this uh, with the web and scrambler being used as defense. And a guidance disruptor or a dampener are also a good idea. I mean, there's just so much that you can do with this ship, it is impressive. And uh, with now, one problem that I did kind of run into uh, is the power grid, surprisingly. You can technically fit the medium extender but for that you would really have to have uh, really high skills for most of the things in the game and you would probably have to use three power grid rigs in order to fit the artillery cans and the medium extender but a passive tank kite drifter would definitely be a very interesting uh, idea to to pull off and that combined with tracking disruptors or even the kind of disruptors makes makes this little ship quite quite deadly and uh, I like you can even use a active tank if you like but for an active tank uh, you would definitely prefer to be a bit close close range or even uh, use a capacitor battery with the with the medium booster you can do that uh, you can easily uh, put one medium booster and one small capacitor battery uh, in this build because you would have to have a source of of capacitor and that would be a bit different a bit difficult if you are using a small Nosferatu at long range now um, one of my personal favorite builds is the DPS glass build which isn't technically glass but it has little to no tank However, it does seem to be fairly tanky, with a extender and a damage control. A build that I use on the Cinnabel, on the Cellus, on most of my uh, PvP cruisers, and on most of my PvP battleships. Let me quickly borrow some of the C types from the Cinnabel, and I'll be replicating a uh, a glass build uh, that. that I use on my cruisers. You can actually uh, do the exact same build on on the Rifter, which is kind of, kind of awesome when you think about it. You get some good tank, good buffer tank, and you get high DPS. Not something the other frigates can do because they don't have four low slots. This is something kind of unique to the Navy frigates at the moment. So, uh, dual gyro stylus, 
a scrambler and here you can use another web uh, or basically any other uh, EUR module and in the high slots I will use C type uh, I will use auto cannons alright now the DPS is a bit weird I think one of my modules glitched out let me let me quickly fix the problem uh, this is one of the problems that sometimes occurs when you're fitting the weapons very quickly sometimes it glitches out so you have to find which one is bucked and I think I'll just pull out all of the all of the weapons and then put them back in since it is definitely bugged now it should hopefully work okay Four hundred, yeah, now it works. Four hundred sixty-one point sixty DPS, but not bad. With C types, it will be definitely a lot higher, and of course, with better skills, it will be even higher. So, it definitely is some decent DPS. Now, let me show you the maximum DPS output on this ship with my current skills, and of course, with my current uh, implants and with the current build. Keep in mind, I use dual burst adapters, not three. I did w add one uh, one rig to be the tank rig. 3.9 km per second is the micro warp drive speed, not bad. I'm using a Mark 9 micro warp drive, so a C type will definitely be much faster than this. And of course, you can use some general units to improve the speed even more. And this is, as I said before, the fastest Navy frigate. Uh, in the game, I mean, it is a Mimata ship, so it it to be it is to be expected. 1017.98 DPS, with a theoretical possible DPS of about 2000. I would say this is awesome, a pretty good DPS. Pretty good uh, DPS for this little frigate. Has the same DPS, nearly the same DPS as my Cinnabal Cold, which is impressive. Has almost the same DPS as a cruiser, and here you can take a look at the. Um, I like the accuracy fall of 6.66 kilometers. There is a lot of 6.66 uh, or 666 stuff on this thing, which is kind of funny. Uh, the signal, the sensor is like 666, and this is 6.66. Interesting. And 24,242 hit points, 2,028 shield. Not bad. And of course, you do get a buffed damage control with a shorter cooldown and it does last a little bit longer than the usual damage control which honestly is very Docking nice request to have. accepted. Now if you prefer more tank you can easily replace one gyro stabilizer into a shield extender a medium shield extender, you have enough power to do that so uh, you can replace one gyro stabilizer into a shield extender and you can also replace one web uh, into a tracking adapter or basically any other uh, module that you would like to to have in its place now for some reason yeah it, it can't fit because I'm surprised that it doesn't have enough power it used to work a minute ago Okay, that's a little bit weird. Is my power grid bucked? Hmm. That's interesting. So I, I can't fit a scrambler. It looks like I can't fit it. Well, okay, it's fair. But it's okay. For some reason it looks like I can't fit it, but it worked like a minute ago. Oh well, in, a, in any case, uh, instead, of the, instead of the long range disruptor, you can easily put a scrambler, and that way you basically get uh, that brawler build, or you can basically use a micro warp drive instead uh, to get that speed overall. This is a replicated build that I use on the Cinnabal and on the Cellus and basically on the on most of my PvP ships. And honestly, I do like how it Undocking. looks so far. This little ship is is very fun to play around with. Uh, very fun to find new builds that will work really well on a on a rifter and since this is literally the first uh, usable rifter 
it's nice that it's good. Now everything seems to be about the same. It has 5.5 thousand in shield now. And with the damage control active, you will have about 40,000 hit points, <laughs> which is not bad. You will also have some very good uh, DPS, and you have a damage control active. You have uh, a damage control and you have a extender, so you can absorb a lot of the incoming DPS from from enemy ships. 737.44 DPS would be about a thousand DPS if I if, would, if I would have the C types, and if this was a full on DPS build, would definitely easily go over a thousand DPS. But it looks pretty solid the way it is right. Docking request Can't accepted. Can't really complain about the Rifter Navy so far. Okay, now that was a that was most uh, PvP builds. You can also run a PvE build if you like. For a PvE build, I prefer a active tank, but since you do have very fast ship, you can also pull off a speed tank. And I believe a speed tank would be the way to go even for PvP if you have one of the new one of the new shield extenders or shield generators as they like to call them. Although the shield generators require a lot of power, so it will be uh, fun to see how I'll manage to put one into this thing. I'll find a way. I, I always do find a way. But yeah, this is the PVE build that I would use. Now, besides a PVE build, you can also uh, use a long-range PVE build with the artillery cannons. But I personally prefer, I personally prefer the close-range approach, since I find that it does clear faster, has more DPS, and overall, I feel like the ship is more fun when it's used uh, for close-range. I almost forgot to uh, to show you a kite glass DPS build. You can do both a uh, roller and kite uh, DPS built on this thing should work really well however with this build a tracking disruptor would definitely be the, the smart idea to have since you definitely do not want to take a lot of damage Undocking. with this build uh, since the artillery cans eat a little bit more power you, don't, you might not be able to fit a medium extender in the end but if you have good skills then uh, you would be able to to do that easily. So uh, let's quickly let me quickly show you the maximum DPS output with our thirty cannons. Now the speed, the kiting speed, uh, is definitely uh, very nice. If you go with a kite build, uh, you want to have auxiliary thrusters so that you ensure to be faster than your target, and the tracking disruptor also helps to avoid any incoming damage should work really well with a tracking disruptor general unit we have a lot of honestly have a lot of uh, ways to to fly this thing okay uh, now the maximum dps is 710.86 with the with the artillery cannon sense oh well, that's pretty good you basically keep the target at about 20 kilometers since it can hit at that distance and you kite and they will not be able to hit you if you have a tracking disruptor and if you're using the disruptor general unit. Overall I am very happy with the Rifter. Uh, it's a very very fun ship to fly and so far the balancing Docking or the, the buff that they have received did them really well. Uh, and let me now show you how this little boat works in in combat. Now this is the PvE build uh, with dual gyro stabilizers, Scrammer, Nosferatu and Web. Thankfully this is a Calder mission, so uh, I'll be able to show you the shield booster in action. It is such a uh, interesting frigate because when you boost, you really are able to tank a lot of damage with this. 
in a frigate versus frigate if you have a good build and if you know how to fly this thing uh, you will be uh, winning most of battles since th these things are tanky uh, and I would say there's, there's a good chance that they might be improved even more down the road always a chance that they will be improved even more down the road uh, one thing that I can see happening is them getting a damage control buff I, I said that if they buff them that they will buff the damage, damage control kind of I kind of still expect that to happen, I mean, if they had a 30 second damage level, that would be perfect, so that's probably what's going to happen next. They did say that there is a balance patch in uh, in September, and September is like right around the corner right now, so in the next balance patch we may see the frigates being buffed even more perhaps, even more frigates do get a, uh, a low slot, medium slot, or even a high slot. But I'm definitely happy to see uh, these frigates perform really well. I know a lot of players have been asking for e warships. I believe the e warships will be will be out uh, at at one point. Although not really sure, not really sure when, but I believe in one of the recent Q and A's they did talk about adding. So uh, they did talk about adding the Evo uh, ships, and I would say if they do add them, uh, they will have extra mid extra medium slots or even extra low slots. I remember back in I think it was the the last open beta, closed beta. I used to fly a Crucifer E War, and that thing had four medium slots, and it had a bonus on Nosferatus. It was a pretty good ship, so definitely hoping to see that ship return. I will fly it. I'll, I'll definitely fly it. But so far, the the Rifter is performing really well. I mean, I have no complaints about the performance of this ship. And very soon I will be boosting the shield. It can boost about 35-40% shield every cycle, every uh, 4.41 seconds, uh, every 4.14 seconds. Really pretty good. Combining that with a very good tank. There we go. Did you see that? Whole shield boosted in one cycle. And it didn't use much capacitor either. It really doesn't use a lot of capacitor, which is impressive. Always nice when... Always nice when the ship is very well balanced. Now I thought about a build that can use dual small boosters, and I didn't really didn't really like it in the end, since it didn't perform as much as a medium booster would do. The power usage, the capacitor usage was definitely uh, much, uh, definitely much better. When I say much better, uh, didn't use much capacitor, but it didn't boost nearly as much as the medium booster does. And that's one of the one of the reasons why I slapped the medium booster. And with the medium booster you can actually focus on the tank a little bit more. Which is, you know, uh, also a very nice thing to very nice thing to have. But so far as you can see, uh, the I mean the handling of the ship is really good. It's it's fast. Uh, definitely feels kind of like a Dramil in a way, although I believe the Dramil might be a little bit faster. I actually, I haven't been flying that thing in a very long time, so I don't really, I don't really know uh, what its top speed is, but they should be around the same speed.
the big difference would be that the ship has more tank than the drum wheel. So if you have a better tank then you have a good chance uh, at at killing uh, a drama in a one v one, but in the end, in, in the end, it really depends on, on the on the pilot. I mean, you will have a navy frigate kill a faction frigate, and you will have a faction frigate kill a navy frigate. It really depends on. In, in the end, it it really just depends on on the pilot, which you know is uh, to be expected. It, it's a good thing that that's the case. It has a very good speed tank as well, so you can avoid. You can easily avoid a lot of damage just by moving fast. Missiles are going to be a problem though, since missiles can. Missiles, missiles are really good nowadays, especially with the missile implant. So, cruisers with missiles are perhaps a big threat. So you have to be careful around them. However, a guidance disruptor is always a good idea to have and I kind of thought to always uh, always reduce a lot of incoming damage so you do have some form of very good defense against a a cruiser that you dismisses but again in the end it really depends on the on the build most of the most of the builds out there are not that good unfortunately so you have a very very good chance at killing most of the ships that you stumble upon. Now why are, mo why are most builds bad? Well, let's say they were looking at the wrong guide. <laughs> they they saw someone fit a booster and a armor repair on the same ship. They replicated it and they died. So, and they keep using the same build. So yeah, that's just <laughs> that's just how it goes. There's a lot of uh, a lot of bad builds out there that. Uh, really don't help anyone and I mean I did try out just for just, just out of curiosity I did try out some of the builds that I had seen out there and they, they're bad they're just bad I tried to get them to work it never worked because it's just bad simple as that when a build is bad it's bad and you can't really do much about that. But thankfully, thankfully, I, I don't. Thankfully, I don't build ships like that. So I think I should be. I should be good. And the game crashed. Oh well. Yeah. I clicked on the map and the game crashed. Lovely. Oh well. Oh, in any case, uh, when I log back in. I think I should be. I think I should be good since it's already like like the last ship that remains, and the mission is already Warp near drive to active. end. So not a big deal, but it can be kind of annoying Warp when it active. crashes all the time. Okay, let me quickly eliminate the last target. And then we can finish up with the with the mission. Autopilot engaged. So the the Rifter Navy is definitely a warp drive active. A fun ship to fly. It's been improved. It's been buffed, and it performs better than it used to. So yeah, overall uh, a fantastic, really fantastic update. And with that being said, hope you guys enjoyed. If you would like to support me, feel free to like and subscribe. And with that being said, stay safe, fly safe, and as always, I'll see you next time.